sit back and wait. You don't, you don't know when it's going to happen or if it's going to happen, but you just let Mother Nature do its thing. Spectators are taking in the sights as plumes of smoke rise from Hawaii's Kilauea volcano. Officials warn new violent eruptions at the crater could start soon. The U.S. Geological Survey says if there is an explosion, rocks weighing several thousand kilograms could be launched nearly a kilometer. Since its initial eruption, 1,700 people have been displaced, 26 homes have been destroyed. To help us understand why this is all happening, CBC science commentator and host of Quirks and Quarks, Bob McDonald joins me now. He is in Victoria. Great to have you on the program, Bob. It's been a long time since we've chatted, but I want to chat Kilauea. We know it's been active and very much so since 1983, but why does it just keep on erupting? Well, Kilauea is a different kind of volcano, Suhana. It looks spectacular. We're getting all these incredible pictures. But the very fact that camera people are standing there looking at the lava walking by shows that you can actually be there, and, and nobody's been killed by this. It's a slow, bubbling volcano. <clears throat> there, there may be some lava fountains, and as you say, there will be rocks thrown up into the sky. But all you have to do is step away from it, and you're okay. It's very different from other volcanoes around the world, like Mount Vesuvius in Italy in, uh, what, 79 AD. It blew its top, and overnight, in minutes, the whole town of Pompeii was covered. People were died right in the street. They, they were just thousands of people were killed. On the other side, Herculaneum, the same thing happened there. Here in North America, we have Mount, Vesu uh, Mount St. Helens in 1980. The top third of the mountain just blew itself into the sky. And that's because those mountains have a lot of water in them. And when water and lava get together, you get steam, and it's a steam explosion, and that's what makes them so violent, where the whole mountain destroys itself. Hawaii's not like that at all. There's, there's hardly any water involved. It's just lava oozing up into the surface. And, and if, uh, if you don't... And Bob, there are, two, there are two new fissures that have opened up. Uh, what does that say about the situation then? of a continuing process and the fissures are just the lava trying to find new ways to get out of the ground but it's it's a, it's an ongoing thing that's going to keep going probably for another few thousand years and here's why Hawaii is different because it's sitting over a hot spot. Now, I was going to do this demonstration using a piece of paper and a candle, but I tried it and the paper burst into flame and I don't want to burn my studio <laughs> down. Good, okay. I'm going to use a pen, okay? So imagine this pen is a hot spot in the earth. It's a chimney that goes right down way down into the mantle, much, much deeper than other volcanoes. And it's just standing there, and the Pacific Ocean is over top of it. And this hot spot burns a hole in the floor of the Pacific Ocean, and you get a volcano. But then the floor moves, and you get another volcano. And then it moves in. Plate tectonics, the craters, or the surface of the Earth is always moving. And what you end up with is a chain of volcanoes. And that's what the Hawaiian island chain is. And right now, the one on the end, the big island, is the one that's active because it's still over the hot spot. But Oahu and Maui and Kauai, the ones to the north, I guess it should be like this, they're, they're dormant. They're no longer active. And right now, the plate is still moving up. And we're going to get a new volcano down here called Luihi that hasn't even broken the surface yet. So this this is what's going on. The lava's coming from so deep, it's just pure lava, and it bubbles out onto the surface and runs down. And that's why Hawaii is the largest volcano on Earth. It, it's, it goes down taller than Mount Everest if you take it all the way to the bottom of the ocean. So it's a slow bubble. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's dangerous if you're right beside it. And as far as the houses that are there, it's, it's bad. I mean, they built houses on the side of a volcano. But it's a live, it's an active volcano. But people on the other side of the island in Hilo and in Kona, they're not bothered by this. It's a very, very local effect. What do you make and of the geological analysis, though, Bob, that, you know, there could be these huge boulders? We know that 26 homes have been destroyed so far by this lava. We know the people have been evacuated, et cetera, et cetera. But boulders, uh, that scares me. <laughs> sure. So stay away from them. <laughs> stay away. Right. So the thing area, but they don't have to evacuate the whole island. My point is that it's not going to be the entire volcano blowing itself up as we've seen in the past with things like Krakatoa, which, which are hugely violent, shocks that were heard around the world. The people on the other part of the other side of uh, the big island of Hawaii, they're feeling some tremors, but they're not bothered by this. It's as though a water main broke in downtown Toronto and there was a big gush of water coming out of the ground. People who live up north in the suburbs don't care about that. They're not bothered. So it's a local effect happening in Hawaii. It's very serious where it is, but if you go to Hawaii, they offer helicopter tours. You can actually fly around these things and 
look at them. You can look down into the crater. You can stand right there. So I'm not minimizing the disaster to the people who live there, but we have to keep things into perspective. It's a spectacular thing to see, but it's not going to blow itself apart. And until that plate moves further again, it's going to keep going in Hawaii until we get the new island and then the big island goes quiet. But we have to wait a couple of thousand years for that. You know what? I remember doing a hike there at Kilauea. Of course, nobody would be up there right now. But so how much longer then can islanders expect this volcano to keep on doing what it is? Very unpredictable because what's happening locally is that new fissures are opening up. See, the whole mountain is being pushed from below and it's stretching. And when it stretches, it cracks. And every time a new crack appears, the lava down or the magma down below will find a new path out. But you notice that it's all moving towards the southeast, and that's because the plate, the Pacific plate, is moving to the northwest. So it's all part of the continuous process that's been going on there for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, Locally, it's going to come and go as, as new cracks open up, and that's what the local geologists are trying to predict. But on the long-term scale, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Thanks for that, Bob. Always great to have you on the program, and I hope you're well. Thank you. I hope you are too, Suhan. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Bob. CBC Science commentator Bob McDonald, host of Quirks and Quarks.